Hello, my name is Mike Miller Nielsen, and I'm going to explain to you how the illegal argument exception should be used. First of all, it has been around since Java 1.0. It helps developers to fail fast. It helps developers to use other developers' methods. It is an unchecked exception. It extends the runtime exception. So this means that the illegal argument exception it gives us an idea of how a method should be used, and if the uh, if the arguments that we pass along to the uh, to the method, if they are uh, legal or if they are uh, not to be used. So let me show you an example for how they are used. First of all, this is a, a class that I've named legal argument exception example one, and in here we have a static a static method called create relative path, which takes two arguments, a parent, which is a string, and a file name, which is also a string. And then the result from this uh, from this method should be uh, parent plus a separator, and then plus the file name. But uh, we do not accept null. Uh, that would not be give us a, a, a good result. So because this uh, method doesn't uh, doesn't want to to use null, then we first check for this. That means that the first thing we do in the method is actually we check we check the arguments that we uh, that comes into the method, and if they do not accept our criteria, then we throw an illegal argument exception like this. The parent path cannot be null. The file name cannot be null down here. And we could also check if the string is empty and then also fail on that and say we cannot have a, an, an empty string as the file name, for instance, if that's what we want to do. Uh, so all these checks are made up here to give to make sure that the quality of the arguments are, 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 are okay. And the reason why we do this is because we want to fail fast. The faster we fail, the easier it is to fix our mistakes and then um, and and then continue on with with the program. A, a program can be very very complex and it can be have a lot of nested methods so to method calls. So we can have a lot of uh, uh, yeah calls to to other methods in, in other classes, uh, which makes it a bit more complex to see where did this go wrong and uh, what actually happened. So especially also if you are in a team with other developers, then it's very polite when you re when you create a, a method that sh should be used by other developers that you actually create a check for all the arguments that comes in, and then you throw an illegal argument exception if the uh, if the argument does not live up to to the, your expect ex expectations for for the use of the method. So. Um, it makes it much easier to to share uh, to share a code base. But let us try to run this program right now because we have a, a main right here. This is our public static void main right here. And here, first of all, we are calling the illegal argument exception uh, relative path with two valid arguments. We write uh, directory one and then we write file one as the second argument. After that, then we just uh, system out print line uh, so we get a, a blank line, and that is because the second example, then we give a null as uh, as as the directory uh, argument, and uh, then we would expect an illegal argument exception. And as you can actually see, we are not uh, we, it's not a checked except, uh, exception, so that means that we are not surrounding anything with the try catch. This is something that uh, should not happen. So, and, and if it happens, then the developer needs to fix this uh, uh, right away. And it's very easy to fix. That's also a good thing about the uh, illegal argument exception. Let us try to run the program and see what happens. We're running the program. In the first situation, we actually got uh, the, the directory one, and then we got the separator, which is a forward slash uh, in, in my situation. And then we have file one right here. In the second, uh, in, in the second, uh, in the second example, then we we've got an exception right here. We can see that illegal argument exception. The parent path cannot be null, and then we get the stack trace. And this is the one of the beautiful parts about the legal argument exception. I no matter almost no matter which uh, ID you're using, which development environment you're using, then uh, you, you will actually get a link that you can click on. So I can just click on this legal argument exception example one line twelve. I can just click left click on this, and then I end on the line, end up on the line where where the exception was actually thrown. And that means that I know, okay, this is where I ended up. And 
yes, I gave a parent that was actually null, so let me fix it again. I can just click uh, one line below, then I can see this is actually where I called uh, my uh, the, the relative path, and then I can then I can change the argument, and then I can say uh, something like uh, directory two if that's what I want to write instead, and then I can run my program again, and this hopefully this time without any errors. And this time I got directory two and slash file one. So this is what it's used for. It's used for uh, yeah collab collaboration um, especially. So and of course the larger uh, the, the larger a program you are working on and the, the the more people that are involved, the more important it is to actually to use the legal argument exception, especially if you're writing APIs or libraries for other people. Then it is uh, an absolute must that uh, that that we create this uh, this these check for the uh, yeah for the method arguments. That's actually it. So this this is how the, this this is what the legal argument uh, exception is is all about. We could create a short example uh, uh, right here where we are. We can do some calculations where we don't want to divide with the zero. So I could have a math example right here. Example, math example one. And again here, I would like to have a main method like this. And then I would like to create a public static. And this could be here. Here we could here we want to return an integer, or maybe a, a yeah. Uh, here we want to return an integer, integer. And then we can actually say add add numbers. So this just it just adds two numbers, integer. And this is now number one. And this is number two. So this is one example. And, and the first thing I would like to check is actually if they're null. Um, let me just check that. If number one equals null, then we throw new illegal argument exception. Um, number one can't be null like this. So just like in the example that we actually saw before, and then I can copy the the lines of code. Then I can copy the lines of code like this. Copy and paste, and then as I can say, number two cannot be null. And maybe in this situation, actually, I do not want uh, people to misuse it and actually to subtract numbers from each other. So I don't want I don't want any negative numbers. So I don't want uh, numbers below uh, zero. So that means that I can say if number one or number two, if number one uh, is less than zero or number two is less than zero and we can actually make it uh, say less than or equal to we also we also don't want to handle no, uh, this the zero if this condition is uh, fulfilled then we throw new illegal argument exception the numbers should be positive should be positive And not null and not uh, zero like this. And here, then we return the numbers number one plus number two like this. And then we can try out this example. So we will say add numbers. Then we will say um, zero, comma one or two. And then we will actually uh, yeah let us uh, let us system out this result right here. Just a more print line. And then we run our program to see what actually happens now. Again here, we get the number should be positive and not zero. And then uh, that means that then we will actually be led to this uh, line right here. And I can click the the, the stack, uh, the, the, the trace one line uh, below. And then I would actually end up to this line right here where the where I call the, the, the method. Okay, so let us try to change it a bit. Um, Let's try to change it to one, then it works. Now we get three, and then let's, let's try minus two. Of course, then we get the same result again with the number should be positive exception. And we can also try with null. Like this.
So this is a very simple example. You could also, sometimes you would actually also have some business rules that need to be fulfilled in your arguments. Maybe you have a, a sales tax that needs to be added to a product, uh, to the price of a product. And of course, that again, that cannot be negative and maybe it needs to match um, what kind of product it is. So it, it's, uh, yeah, it depends on the situation, of course. And, and uh, these checks can be, uh, can be quite complex actually sometimes and sometimes uh, they would actually be written in a in a in a separate method also it depends on how many there are um, so but that's it for for now thank you for watching and remember to like and to subscribe because we have a lot of cool things coming up soon bye bye